Hello, this is James Barrett, the WebLogic server team. I wanted to give a quick demonstration on how to create a diagnostic system image and what it would be good for. A colleague of mine called the, my attention to a Stack Overflow question today about someone who had been experiencing a low thread count periodically, and their monitoring system, after uh, several minutes, would execute a thread dump, but it was a little bit too late. So they had a low thread count at this time period, and like two minutes later they were trying to get a thread dump and it was too late. And so how could we uh, use WebLogic Server's built-in capabilities to uh, get the thread dump during the right time? So there's something called a diagnostic system image that you can capture at any time uh, with WebLogic Server. And what happened here, I'll just give you a, a look at what that is. It's a zip file, and inside the zip file, it has a bunch of .image files. These are XML files that give you a s snapshot of what's going on in these subsystems at the time, plus a JRocket flight recording if you're running JRocket. So if we look at the jvm.img file, you can see this is just an XML file, and at the bottom we have a thread dump. Right? So this starts a full thread dump and we can see what all the threads are doing. Um, so this is exactly what we need. Now we just need to know how to execute this um, diagnostic and tell the server to execute this, uh, create this diagnostic image when the thread counts are low. And so WebLogic Server um, has a built-in capability in the console to set up a snapshot of this diagnostic image. Um, here we, uh, we have one existing. I'm just going to create it from scratch so you can see it um, right from the start. We'll just call it module zero, keep the defaults. Um, so now I have a system module. I need to target it at a server. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to be using the admin server, so I target it there. That's great. Now we can go back to the module page. Now that it's targeted, and I can create a watch and notification. So a notification is going to be kind of like an action that we want to occur when we detect a condition. So in this case, we want to take a diagnostic image. That's the action we want. But other um, actions, we could initiate an email. We could send a JMS message, send a JMX notification, or send an SNMP trap. So these are just kind of like outbound actions, basically, that you've detected a condition. Now, what do you? What kind of noti notification do you want? So let's just say diagnostic image. I'll call it diag image here. And I want this to be enabled. And this uh, basically says, um, if I want to lock out uh, for a period of minutes to make sure I don't take too many diagnostic images in a short time period. Okay, so we've got my notification. Now I have to create the watch. So a watch will be looking at a specific JMX metric. Um, in this case, uh, low th threads below 10, I'm going to say. Um, and I'm going to look at event data. I could um, make this be off of um, collected metrics. Actually, collected metrics is what I need here. Um, and this is going to be metrics from the server. And so right now we don't have any expressions. I'm going to add a, an expression. This is going to be based on JMX metrics. So I'm going to use the server runtime, mbean. And there's a, a specific mbean we're looking for. I'm looking for the thread runtime mbean which has the thread counts. Um, I could use lots of other um, values as well and um, base my decisions off of them, but I know in this instance I'm going to use the thread um, runtime. And in this case I want the one from the admin server, so that's the only one that's uh, currently running. So I'm going to select that. And in this case I'm going to select the execute threads total count and whenever that is less than or equal to let's say a value I'm going to just say 10 in this case I want to basically have this watch to fire and in this case uh, it gives you the watch rule up here and um, that's enough for me I just want to detect when the threads are beneath uh, 10 and this thing called an alarm um, is basically to make sure that um, we don't fire this all the time continually. It's, for example, I could have it um, manually reset and so that someone actually has to come reset the alarm before it's enabled again. Or I could have it re-enable itself after a time period, let's say a minute or five minutes or something like that. And then in which case it would send the new notifications again. So I'm going to use a manual reset here. 
and I'm for my notification I want the diag image that we just created earlier for my notification to be the one I use and there we go so now it's active and if I go look at my server log well first thing uh, one last thing I, I should have done with my diag module and for the collected metrics I want to collect the metrics instead of every 300 seconds I want to connect, collect them every uh, 30 seconds. I'll do it three seconds just for for purposes so it happens very fast. Oh, in the background I just saw my log scroll up here right now. So if you look, um, the alert fired and we are, um, here's the watch rule that we just detected. It's under 10. Um, it says this is a watch alarm type of a manual reset and then that in turn created a, a notification that fired a diagnostic image. And it actually gives me the full path to the image. So let's go ahead and get the uh, directory for that. And now let's go take a look at the diagnostic image. Great. Okay, so we just created um, a new zip file. And if we look inside, we're going to have our jms.img file. And that's going to have our thread dump inside. So there you have it. Um, within a few uh, simple configuration steps, you can get a thread dump um, with a whole bunch of other information as well, including the JRocket flight recording. I also wanted to show you um, a visual way to represent this information. So if you go back to the home page in the console, there's this thing called a monitoring dashboard. And I have a chart here called James. And I've already added these metrics. Um, the uh, execute thread total count and the uh, standby count and you, the way you get those is you go to this metric browser and I can browse all the embeds in my server and then uh, drag and drop the uh, metrics from this column over here over into my chart and then they'll show up over there. While we're waiting for this to load it takes about 30 seconds to take data points. Um, I just also wanted to show you the how you can reset that watch alarm. So. Um, using WebLogic server scripting tool, there's a JMX um, value to reset the alarm. And I'm just going to connect into my server here. And you can find out um, what this uh, value is um, by looking at the WebLogic server MB in reference. Let's go ahead and look at that here. So if you just go look at your runtime MB and then use the WLDF watch and notification MB. Let's see if I can find it here. Watch notification runtime, yep. And if I go look at my operations, I have a reset watch alarm. Right? So this is going to reset my alarm and I just wanted to show you how you can do that quickly so um, here we are in the config I want to go to the uh, runtime tree and if I just go specifically to my let's do a listing there's my reset watch alarm and um, it's called threads below 10 is the one that I want. So if I just call CMO for current management object, reset watch alarm, threads below 10. There we go. So there we go. Now we just saw this scroll again. Um, so now just uh, just now at 11:53 again we hit another. After resetting the alarm, it fired right away again because we're still uh, threads below 10. So if I go back, look at my diagnostics images, I have taken yet another one just at this moment. So finally, let's go back and take a look at the, the monitoring tab so you can see that the monitoring tab will show you the same kind of views um, before I can monitor these metrics in real time and uh, uh, make multiple charts to monitor different types of, of metrics and see them visually. Hopefully this has given you a, a quick demonstration of how you can make use of the diagnostic system image to, to take action on events. 
and uh, let me know if you have any questions.